The first folio of Shakespeare's plays places The Merchant of Venice among the comedies. It does have some witty exchanges, some clowning, and not one but two weddings by the end, all marks of a comedy. Some have even argued that because Shylock is forced to convert to Christianity, he will be going to heaven rather than hell when he dies. But Shylock the Jew is the reason critics and audiences today might rather include The Merchant of Venice among the problem plays. After the 20th century, we're more sensitive to evidence of anti-Semitism than Shakespeare might have been. Shylock is easily seen as the villain of the piece. His defeat in the law court makes the happy ending of a comedy possible in its full glory. On the other hand, Shylock justifies his demand of a pound of Antonio's flesh as the bond for the loan he makes Antonio so Antonio can loan money to his young friend Bassanio in order to woo Portia by reminding Antonio that he has badmouthed him in public and interfered in his business. The flesh seems more a symbolic revenge than a real possibility given Antonio's wealth and his multiple prospects now sailing back to Venice. Shylock's loss of his beloved daughter by marriage to a Christian, who have together raided his treasury, encourages some sympathy for the poor man, even when his grief is as much for his ducats as for his daughter. And Shakespeare gives to Shylock the brilliant rhetoric of his hath not a Jew eyes speech, in which he compares all the ways that Jews and Christians are alike, all being human. It is a speech that has been used to assert the common humanity of other ethnic groups besides Jews. So is Shylock to be despised or pitied? Given Shakespeare's usual complexity and broad sympathies, probably both. And when you have a performance of Shylock that gives full range to the character, you can hate him and pity him and admire him. You have such a performance by Julie George Carlson in the current St. Louis Shakespeare production. I have referred to Shylock with male pronouns, and so Shakespeare created him. George Carlson is a woman and plays Shylock as a woman. While too close a reading might raise an eyebrow about the Venetian mores of the time, George Carlson makes it work. The others in the cast play close to her level and the company as a whole is improving its handling of Shakespeare's language, with occasional lapses and a tendency to go slow. Addison Brown's Antonio looks a little young for the way he describes himself, but he is fully self-possessed. Riley Capps Bassanio is an ardently youthful lover. Liv Summers' Portia commands her house well and is particularly effective in court. Portia's perceptive maid Nerissa, played by Aaron Struckhoff, catches the eye of Bassanio's friend Graciano, played with splendid energy and conviction by Jeremy Goldmeyer. Aaron McRaven appeals as Shylock's daughter Jessica, appealing particularly to Joseph Garner as Bassanio's friend Lorenzo. Mike Wells and Jeff Lovell play friends of Antonio and Bassanio, with Lovell doubling as the Duke of Venice. Duncan Phillips doubles as the Prince of Aragon, and the master-switching servant, Lancelot Gobo. Chrissy Watkins and Peyton Gillum inventively complete the ensemble, all smartly directed by Phil Gill. Kyra Bishop Sanford's set, painted by Natalie Placentini, gives us sketches of Venice, though audiences today probably don't need the extra details of the show-slowing winged walls. Michelle Friedman Seiler enriches the costumes with period details. Tony Anselmo's lights grow romantically dim in the evening. Caitlin Ferris designs sound, and Trish Baylord the props. St. Louis Shakespeare has given the challenging Merchant of Venice a thoughtful production. It has, and I agree very strongly with your praise of Julie George Carlson Shylock. Yeah, very fine. I hope you like the reviews on Two on the Isle. You can click here to see other reviews and to subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to ring the notification bell to be reminded immediately after we post. Enjoy the reviews.